people to help me do it. But God, I understand my heart. Lord, understand that I'm just trying to chase after your glory. And so we find here that David was still uncertain. This time he grabbed the two chief priests and he said, I'm still not sure if God's going to receive it from me this time. So you go ahead. Yeah. You carry this thing in and let me just stay in the woods and you send me a word back and let me know whether God received it or not. Right. Yeah. So how we just throw the rock and hide our hands. <laughs> David was wise. You got to love him. You got to love David. Yes, and so this is what he did. But one of the things that I really want to point out and, and just really kind of sit on for a minute is he turned to Zadok mm -hmm. and he said, are you not a seer? Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that he, he was a priest. He was an elder priest. He was a chief priest. Yes. But he was prophetic. Yes. And so he said, if there's anyone that I'm going to trust to bring me a sure word of God, yes. if there's anyone that I can put confidence in that's not going to, to, to tickle me or try to, you know, impress yes. me because I'm king, I don't want that. I, you know, when you arrive to a certain place and God, you can really do without the, you know, the accolades. I, yeah, God, I can yeah, do without yeah, the commercial. I can yeah. do without the advertisement. I just want to see God's glory. Yeah. And so, baby, I don't need anybody to tickle me and tell me how wonderful I don't yeah. need to roll and do a cartwheel. I don't need that. I don't need a word from God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Now, you know, they're in a dire place, a desperate, yeah. hungry place, yeah. and they owe oh, you awesome, man. I don't want to hear that right now. God bless you. I'm hungry. I'm broken. I'm bleeding. Do you hear if God say this thing? Yeah. Is there a word from from the Lord. And they were like, please, spare me. I, I know I'm king. I know I'm his anointed. I know I'm a better man than Saul, but I don't need to hear that right now. I, my, my focus, my, the, 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 the issue at hand, the prevailing task at hand is to bring God's glory back in Jerusalem. Amen. And he turns his attention, even though he says he sends two priests, uh -huh. but his attention was turned to them. He said, I know that you're a prophet because David was a prophet himself. Yes, he was. And see, as a prophet, you don't have to uh, advertise who you are. Yes, he is. You don't have to walk around with a big badge. The prophet is here. You sit down and just wait and let me come in and do what yes, I do. Yes, yes, yes. A prophet recognizes a prophet because we share the same spirit. Yes. So whether you call yourself a prophet or usher, missionary, we know art thou will see you. Uh, oh, that's good. Because the fit is on you. Hey, when God brands you as a prophet, yes. you're branded for life. Right. You're branded. You, can't change. you cannot change it. There's no getting away from it. There's no getting around. When you've been branded, when God seals you, and I tell people I make a joke out of us, I say, you know, God is so wise that he decided not to um, call us as, as adults into a faith. He called us from the womb. That's right. And I said, I believe, and I'm going to check with him when I get there. And <laughs> I believe the reason why God did it because He knew is that if we were in our right mind yes, we wouldn't go and had time to think about it, uh -huh. we'd be like, uh, uh -huh. no thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. I'll pass. Sure you tell the truth. Because there's a fascination with the prophetic. Yes. And I understand that because we all need a word from God. We all want to hear, yes. we all pull it and pull yes. it from God. Yes. And so people, in fact, they're dealing with low self esteem or rejection issues. Mm -hmm. They want to have people flock to me. I'm the prophet. I've got to answer. Flock yes. over. Come to my conference. Buy my book. Buy my thing. Yes. And, and so they want to gather people. But a true prophet is like, get away from me. I don't. I don't <laughs> because they've been broken and cracked so much. Yeah. And then like Pastor said, you have to pay for the word that you release. That's yeah. it. I was in the office and I was like, God, why, Lord? Why did you give me this word? And the true prophet didn't just say, I'm saying, hey, I got a prophetic word. There were times in the word of God, God had to say, Elijah, where are you? Yeah. You just don't walk around past that biblical thought. So this is our prophetic conference. We're going to move on. That's all right. Tell the truth anyway. <laughs> So you, you just learn that by the Spirit of God who a person is. That's it. You can be with a person your entire life and not really know who they are. Yeah. But David said, I know you're a priest, but aren't you a seer? Yeah, yeah. I'm picking that up on you. I'm, I'm, I'm sensing this thing on you. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so he said, if there's anyone that I want to uh, confide in or, or base a decision on, I need somebody who can hear from God. Yeah. That's who I want in my corner. Yeah. Let me move on, move on past that. So what, what we're seeing here, what we're seeing here is two orders of priests. The priesthood of Abiathar and the priesthood of, priesthood of Zadok. And I'm probably mispronounced. I'm sorry for the Hebrew right. scholars. Um, but you see them initially working together uh -huh. to achieve a common goal, a common cause. Mm -hmm. 
You see them working together in the ministry. You see them working together in crusades. You see them working together in evangelism. And all things are well. But there will come a time when God begins to pull covers off of us and we begin to see who we're really working with. Because Abiyatha started out really good. Yes, he, did. he started out on fire for God. As a matter of fact, I think it's in um, is it First Kings? I got some of the scriptures written down. But in, in one particular scripture, he was one of the ones who ran to uh, David when he was in the woods running from Saul. He was one of the ones that ran to cover David. I know you're anointed. I know you're a mighty man of God. So sometimes people start out right. Yeah. But just because you start out right, doesn't mean you want to end up right. You are responsible for cultivating your own spirit, man. Beyond the ordination, beyond the piece of paper, beyond the license, beyond the church, beyond the, the cathedral, you are responsible for cultivating who you are in God. There are some people who are anointed, start out on fire for God, with preach and blow you up on the chairs and views out the building. And you check with them a year later, and you're like, God, is that the same person? Where has the anointing gone? Yeah, yeah. Where has the hunger? Yeah. I believe now that some of us are just too blessed to possible. Uh, there was a time, and I'm sure the older generation, y'all can, can testify to this. Yeah, yeah. There was a time when we were seeking God for the things that we have. Uh -huh. Man, you couldn't get to the church fast enough. You would, put, and you would be the last one leaving the church, the first one coming, and you hugging everybody you want. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Got you a cake in the car. Got you some mac and cheese. We were so faithful on fire or get or shut. Oh, my God. We praise the Lord like they lost their mind. We'll step over you, run over you, drool on you. Praise God. They would get to God the best way they knew how. Why? Because they needed something. That's right. But what happens to us when we have God's hand but we don't have his heart? What happens when the things that we've been pulling on God for, when we get them now, oh, praise the Lord. I'm going to give them over. 